actor. So Life is Art is the new project. When did you actually finish it? Because you were involved in not just being featured, but also it's your voice right there. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's 11 years in the, in the works. So it's probably been about a year that, that it finally came, uh, it got finished when we started sending it off to the to the film festivals. Wow. Yeah. Did you have a say in the script or the story of it, or did you just read what you were given? Yeah, I, I, I it was totally, I had complete control because it, it was my voice and, and my movie. So it's kind of a joke that I'm giving you right now because I let the people who do what they do, do it. I just, I let them take it. Uh, it's best uh, to let other people see their version, especially uh, yeah, with my, my director that's been on it, Luis Reyes, who's an incredible writer of, of, uh, of movies in Hollywood for, uh, anyway. So he's he was a guy there always behind it. And then Kayvon too, Derek at the end. Right. Derek King, yeah. So when I look at your career, it's not my life, it's your life. And I say, hey, he's been in more than 100 movies, hundreds of TV shows and all that. So it seems to me like it never stopped for you. But was there ever a period in your career where you were kind of worried if the work was going to keep coming? Uh, uh, no. I mean, I, I was shocked. Not shocked, but I was surprised when it didn't, when it kind of died down in the 90s because I had been going uh wall to wall the the whole time since i got here and my first uh, seven months in, in in the business i did four feature films two with hal wallace the greatest biggest producer of all time and dalton trumbo and and you know uh roger corman so going mm -hmm. back to the independent that is now the big thing but he was the first real independent filmmaker so yeah that and then and then along with my my book, Life is Art, that they can get on, on pepeserna.net, order it along with my artwork, is that it's it's uh, it's all in the eye of the beholder, right? And mm -hmm. what what they're going to see and hear and feel, because that's what I want, is not, hey, look what I did. Look, look at how many movies I've done. Look at all my artwork. Look at... What I want is I'm an improv guy. I, I that's what I do. I I uh, do Im improv workshops. I want you to be inspired to say, you know, where you where people say I say, what are you going to be? Oh, I want to be a writer. I want to no, know. You already are, and where you are right now is incredible. You have no idea how incredible it is to know that you love to do something, because so many people don't. They get stuck in a job that's eight to five and it's like before they know it, it it's they're going to retire and they don't even have a pension nobody has taught them anything about how you have to uh, not spend more than you make how it doesn't matter how much you make if, if you're going to spend it all you can make uh, 10 million a year and you'll spend 10 million a year right but you can have 30,000 a year and be saving and become a multimillionaire because you knew how to save and how to make your money grow and work for you. And that's the same thing in life of acting or painting or whatever it is, is having the passion, surrounding yourself around people who are of like mind. And, and that way you can create things together. And it's so much more fun uh, working together. So my last question is related to what you just said. It sounds like Roger Corman taught you really well because you're one of the actors who your first or one of your first major credits was a Corman film. And there's stories about how cheap Corman was, but the more you think about it, the smart, smart businessman he was for making his production so cheap. So did you learn a lot about money from Roger Corman as well? No, no, I, I didn't. I never even met Roger Corman. You know, so it was a different director, Stephanie Rothman. But but it's that mindset. It doesn't matter where you look. It's it's the, your your uh, mechanic, your electrician, your plumber. They're all it's they're all the Roger Cormans of life. It is how do you make something happen? You know, how do you make something happen? What what you're doing, and enjoy, love what you're doing. 
it wasn't so much that he was cheap, but he he must have figured out that hey, if I cut back, I'll be able to do more because I don't have to wait for for Big Daddy to come and give me his blessing and say, here, I'm going to give you some money to do it. I, I did this documentary. It's it's our our documentary. I'm I'm distributing it. My publishing my book because I. I want to know who's watching. I want to know how I can get it out to more people because that's my passion is people. And how do I get out to more? Where are you located? Long Island, New York. Have you ever filmed out here? No, I never have. Well, but one day, me, hopefully you will. But tell hey, me that uh, Kevin Smith has a theater, a new theater there, right? Uh, he, close he to bought? here. Close mm -hmm. to here. More, it's more Billy Crystal territory out here. No, but I mean that Kevin Smith bought a theater where where he's an actual theater is there in Long Island, some somewhere nearby. I have to look into that. You're teaching me things, but the bottom line is thank you, Pepe, for the thank decades you. of great art. Congratulations on the book, the documentary, and looking forward to everything that's to come from you, the human being. You're an inspiring person. And to all your listeners out there, Please get it out there, get people to watch it and get, uh, because my story is your story. And uh, let's make it happen because uh, they said, how can I get to Hollywood? How can I, you're already in Hollywood. Wherever you are, there you are. Do it. Did you see the adventures of Buckaroo Banzai? Yes. Yeah, anyway, so, yeah. So those are some great movies. Check it out. Outrocast.